Right, well, where are you? Oh, you're over there. Hello. Okay, I've got on the blank about an 8 inch bowl in beach and playing around with the different sharpening on my bowl gouge which would be completely unrecognisable to anyone with any sense. <laughs> so not me, it got far too pointed, crazy. So I thought, well I'll try mucking around doing a texture and colour on the outside of this one. And then in the middle here I've just used my very high tech point tool piece of high-speed steel in a little ER11 collet, I think that is, and put some grooves in at the bottom. It's had a quick sand, now I'm going to put some black in the bottom of those grooves. I don't know whether to do black on the rim or use the colouring that I'm going to put on, so I'm going to leave that as it is for the moment. But I do want to get black into the bottom of the foot there, so I'm going to just change the angle of the spray. Yep, yeah, and there we are, so let's leave that a few minutes to dry. Okay, right, now I like how it looks, but you know me, never want to stop playing around with all the things I've been spending my money on. So some Joe Sonia metallic paints and some Kleister medium. In fact, I bought a set of uh, acrylic colours, acrylic metallic colours, um, at Maker Central um, from the Joe Sonia stand. And the Kleister medium, I've not used this before, but it should make them a little bit transparent. And I want to sort of go for an aged, metally patina, copper, blah, 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 kind of thing. You know what I mean. Let's get on with it. Right, so here we have the paint and the medium. Just going to mix it up. It says to start off with a ratio of three parts medium to a one part paint. I didn't measure that scientifically, I did it by eye. That won't surprise any of you, will it? Okay, no, I don't want so much on my brush. I don't know if it's best to put it on with a brush or a cloth, but I'm going to go with a brush. I suppose thinking about it, I probably just ought to leave it at the copper rather than put the copper and the rose in. Unlikely to get any kind of realistic effect with mixing the metals, but should that stop me? Should it? Do you think it will? I doubt it. So I've got burnished copper in here. I'm now going to put a bit of pale gold in with it. And I'm just going to mix that into this bit. A little bit, give me a little bit of a different colour, a little bit of a different look. Slap it on. Look at the skill involved in this, folks. Dog's dinner and 
all sorts come to mind. I think it actually works best on this outer bit of the of the bowl where there's where there aren't the ridges. Now I'm a bit gummed up in some of these areas so just using the brush just to try to clear those lines a little bit but not completely paint over the black. I'm going to be really annoyed if I haven't pressed the record button. I'm not even going to look. Right, let's get the middle out. And give it a little shine on the outside with a little bit of burnishing cream. There we have it. <coughs> Very colourful. In fact, I think probably, I think the front looks a little messy in comparison. This is the bit I like the best. Up here you can really see the mixture of the colours much better. It feels nice in the hand though. Going to use it as our Settlers of Catan dice bowl. So it's going to get a bit of use. The end grain is not brilliantly done with my carbide tool. I'm not a big fan of them. I've not done enough practicing with them, I don't think. Anyway, there we go. <coughs> Here it is. I'm showing the back more than the front because I, I like the back better. The front has got the same sort of colouring on it, but I think the grooves, in a way, take away from the look of it. I like it m best around the rim here on the outside where there isn't actually any grooves where there are no grooves <sighs> get me grammar teeth in properly anyway um, put some steels up as normal give you a clearer idea of what it's like ignore the end grain inside I need much more practice using carbide tools um, and that's it for this week really thanks for watching and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe getting up to 2000 subscription is absolutely free and when I hit 2000 there'll be another giveaway 
Thanks for watching. Wow! Since filming most of this video, uh, I've been to UKIS 2018. Um, did a demonstration, a little bit nerve-wracking, not quite the same as talking to camera, but uh, I hope people who saw it found it helpful, enjoyable, useful, thought in inspiring, thought provoking. Let's go for that. And uh, I was delighted eventually to spot one of my platters on the cover of the program. So thank you very much, Martin. And Costas, fame for the platter you won in my thousand subscriber giveaway. I'm getting close to 2000. So there'll be another giveaway coming up soon, I hope. And at UKIS, I've bought some interesting some supplies to feature in future videos. So keep watching. Magnolia leaves, skeleton leaves. They look amazing. Stenciling, gluing on, texturing. Bit of resin. Um, I've done resin stuff in the past. If you look right back at my videos, there's one of making a pen, uh, pen blank and some gorgeous pigments to put in that resin. And some lovely, what I'm, well, I'm thinking of it as makeup for wood. This wonderful range of Buffett waxes. They do look like a little compact, don't they? With a bit of makeup in. Ooh, such delicious colors in there as well. I can open them. Oh, you'll have to wait to see until I get that open. All the more reason to keep watching. Bye-bye. Oh, seven, robbing. Seven again? Seven, three times in a row? This bowl is useless. Oh, four seven. Ah, a 10, let's leave it at that.